The future of surgery is going to be fully digital. It has been for quite a, a while about developing surgical robots, but those surgical robots are really a tool as part of a huge platform, and this platform is digital surgery. You know, as the surgery is becoming much more technologically advanced, the technical skills and also non-technical skills will have to be taught to the future surgeons. King's Health Partners is an academic health sciences center south of the River Thames in London. This partnership has within it an important part for surgeons. It's called King's Health Partners Academic Surgery. Surgical simulation has been around for a number of years. At King's Health Partners, we are regarded as pioneers in this field. I developed with a collaboration with a mechanical engineering and computer science group in Gothenburg, the first laparoscopic nephrectomy simulator. It's 20 years old. The guys in St. Thomas's Hospital have been the uh, epicenter, you can say, introducing the concept of simulation as a very useful tool. And this same model has been rolled over nationally in the United Kingdom. The problem with all this is everything is done in a lab. The burning question was whether this made a difference to patients. And that's how the simulate randomized trial came about. Despite the widespread adoption of simulation, the evidence base surrounding simulation was quite scarce. We developed Simulate as the first international randomized control trial to address the specific question as to whether surgical simulation really made better surgeons and also safer surgeons. We first selected an index procedure, which was urethroscopy. This was followed with recruitment of novice residents from 10 institutions across the world. Residents were randomized to simulation versus conventional training. Our results showed that the group who underwent simulation training had better performance scores overall. It shows very clearly for the first time that simulation creates better surgeons. For example, it reduces patient complications by 50%. So the next phase of this work will be the analysis of non-technical skills from the trial, where we hope to look at the differences between the two groups in terms of skills such as situational awareness, decision-making, and leadership. Surgery is a craft specialty, and we surgeons have always focused on doing things with our hands. To this, we have added non-technical skills. Notice one thing, is completely missing. Can we improve the minds of the surgeon? In high level sports, it'll be quite difficult to find any sports person who won't be doing a lot of cognitive training before any kind of competition. What we're trying to do is introduce some of these training techniques to support surgeons in improving their skills even further. In motor imagery, what one does is imagine performing a task without any actual physical movement. And by doing this repeatedly, you then improve the performance of that task by improving and reaffirming the neural connectivity. What we did for the first time with a Mayan trial was to perform functional magnetic resonance imaging of participants. And for the first time, we had direct evidence showing that mental training did increase and improve the connectivity between key areas of the brain for motor performance. We have recently established a collaboration between King's Health Partners Academic Surgery and Surgical and Interventional and Engineering. A new lab has been set up based at St. Thomas's Hospital, bang opposite the Houses of Parliament in London. One of the areas that we are really keen is actually how can we use digital surgery to improve outcome for patients specifically in, in uh, prostate surgery, radical prostatectomy, for instance. An example would be automatically segmenting the MRI scans of a patient's prostate gland so that we can build a 3D image of that prostate with a tumor and plan our robotic prostatectomy in a much finer fashion. Monai Label started as a joint collaboration between NVIDIA and KCL. It's an open source platform where you have the user interface, right, where clinicians can provide interactions through clicks or region of interest. And in the back end, there is an algorithm, an AI algorithm. The more you do this, then the model is learning actively. 
and then the more clicks you put, the more it's adapted to your data. We are in a position to, to generate annotations of prostate gland and, and cancer lesions rapidly, robustly, and, and, and very efficiently. At the moment, we are designing a study where we can use these automatic segmentations for 3D printing and for 3D visualization. That means that they don't only rely on video material, but also in the anatomy that they hold in their hands. I think the future will be really about making sure that you can use all of the information from the electronic records, all of the imaging and sensing information that you're acquiring to better take care of your patient. We at King's Health Partners Academic Surgery are very excited to be part of this fantastic digital future, which I think will be good for patient care and good for surgical training.